On this video, we're going over installing Linux for the very first time. So I've been a lifelong Windows user up until last November until I made the switch to Linux just because of a lot of things that happened with Windows 10 that I didn't particularly agree with. So with that said, what does it take to move to Linux? So in this video, I'm going over the install and then I'm gonna continue this through probably about a six video series. So be looking out for this and I'll leave in the description the actual playlist that I'm using so you can easily skip ahead if needed. So the very first thing you should do is prepare to install Linux. Now, before doing this, I highly recommend either trying it out in a virtual machine or just when we make the USB drive, just use the live environment to kind of poke around in to see if this is maybe something you want to do or can do. If you're not willing to learn, chances are this is not going to be for you. But for the preparation, you need to check to see what kind of compatibility you have. If you're a gamer out there, check Lutris.net and ProtonDB.com. Again, links are in the description so you can check those out. Type in your games that you like to play. Make sure they're compatible with Linux and you'll be able to get those working. Also, things to know like the Adobe Creative Suite is another thing that kind of hampers people from adopting Linux. So if you're a big Adobe user, again, Linux is probably not for you or you may want to use Windows specifically on like a virtual machine or something else just for that. But for now, just know that you're kind of locked into Windows for Adobe. One other software that a lot of people get hung up on is Microsoft Office. I'm a big Microsoft Office user and frankly, I don't like a lot of the Office offerings from Linux just yet. So I always end up using the online suite. So there's the G app suite for Google and then there's also Microsoft Office Online which I use as well. So I kind of bounce between those two and I actually don't use an application on my computer anymore to do any Office work. So let's go over the differences between Linux and Windows because there's a lot of them. Uh, very first thing you'll notice is Linux is extremely versatile. Pretty much you can change everything, and I do mean everything. Your file manager, your desktop environment, just it, it's limitless. So if there's something about Linux you don't like, chances are you'll be able to change that, and that's why I'm making this series is just kind of show you all the modifications I usually make to my Linux install and you don't necessarily need to make these modifications I just want to show you that it's an option. The other thing is installing programs works completely different because installing programs in Linux is extremely easy where in Windows it was so difficult or so just ugh. you had to go to a website download the program install it it's just not fun. On Linux, you pretty much just type in one command and install it, or you can go to one of the app stores in Linux and install programs that way. And I'm gonna show both those methods as well. The other things Linux has going for it is it has a far more advanced file system. So there's no maintenance. You don't need to defrag. It just runs fast pretty much all the time. And it's just a far better off file system. In that same vein, Linux has a lot better security because it was designed with security in mind, where Windows, it was kind of tacked on as an afterthought. And then finally, the big difference is in performance. You can run Linux on a far worse machine because it has way less overhead. It's not constantly downloading updates. It's not running a bunch of tasks and processes in the background. Uh, Linux is just far cleaner than Windows and it's a lot leaner so you can run it on older hardware far easier and your newer hardware which I have a pretty beast of a machine I prefer Linux because I get more out of it and then finally the big versatile difference and this is one that is really a hang up and I've kind of gone over it is the compatibility what programs are you going to use does it work in Linux? Those types of things. So I definitely, that's a big hang up for most people. So check the compatibilities before making the leap because uh, compatibility is a big stopping point for many people. Uh, just know that it is worth it. And if you can find alternatives for what you're using in Windows that may not work in Linux, uh, I found you know switching out Photoshop, switching out uh, my Microsoft Office and going to the online version. These were things I gave up but it was well worth it to me. So with the groundwork laid, let's go ahead and jump in and do our very first Linux install. 
Okay, to start out with, we need to download a program to make a bootable USB drive so we can boot into Linux and install it. To do this, we simply need to go to felinaio etcher The link will be in the description below. Once here, click download and then simply run the program after you download. Click I agree and then go ahead and install this. We use this to actually install our bootable media. With that installed, we now need to download Pop OS. So let's go ahead and download that. From here, just simply go to download or download LTS. Uh, just go ahead and click download. I don't recommend the LTS, especially if you have newer hardware. If you're running like a three or four year old machine or, or more, uh, I would recommend the LTS. So it just depends on your hardware. Uh, LTS will give you a little more stable experience if you have older hardware. If you have newer hardware, again, uh, the regular download will probably be the best one for you. So pick your architecture. This is reliant to on the actual graphics card you're using. If you have an NVIDIA card, obviously click NVIDIA. If you have AMD or Intel integrated graphics, go ahead and click this one. And once you click this one, it'll go ahead and download the ISO. Once that's downloaded, we need to launch Etcher. So go ahead and click it right here, or you can easily get it from your start menu as well. It'll be right here. With that launch, we need to select the pop OS image that we just downloaded. So let's go into uh, the downloads directory, or actually I have it in a special image directory, and we're gonna go ahead and install pop OS. Once you select your USB device you have in, hit continue, and then flash. Once this goes through, it'll wipe out this drive and reflash it. I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up 2000% so we don't have to watch the progress bar. All right, with the actual drive made now, we can officially reboot the computer and boot directly from it. Please note, you might need to go into your BIOS and change it to boot from this device, but many BIOS have a boot menu where you can hit F10, F11, or F12, everyone's a little bit different, uh, and then select this USB device. Uh, just be note uh, the actual name of the device. This one was a Advia 4 gig drive, so we'll need to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and inject this, reboot, and install Pop! OS. Okay, it's booting up now, so we'll just wait for this to finish up. Okay, this is the initial install screen. We'll just select our language and go through the prompts. So English, United States, English US, and then we're gonna go default input. From here, we're gonna do clean install, click clean install. And then we just select our disk and say erase and install. This will erase everything on the drive. So if you do have windows on this drive, please note it will disappear along with all your data. So make sure you back up anything prior to doing this install procedure on your computer. All right, you can choose to encrypt or not encrypt. Uh, the benefits of encrypting, obviously more security. By not encrypting though, you have a lot more recovery options. Should something happen and you need to recover things, it's a little bit easier when the drive's not encrypted. So. Uh, choose which one you'd like to do and also remember if you encrypt it make sure you remember your password because without it you'll have a heck of a time accessing your data so for this install we're not going to encrypt okay with this done let's go ahead and reboot the machine now on reboot here i actually had to enter my username and password in and the recording cut out so please choose your username and password just make sure you remember it because you will need it for customizing the operating system. So with this, we'll go ahead and log in. And we're presented with the desktop. Now there's a bunch of stuff that you're gonna need to do on here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off. I just wanted to show the installation here. But in the next video, I'm gonna go over customizing this and getting more of that Windows look and feel just because I don't particularly like this layout and how it is set up, uh, especially coming from Windows, this seems very foreign to me. Uh, however, it is a great interface. If you want to learn this and you wanna learn something new, by all means, 
Uh, GNOME is a great desktop environment, which is the default of Pop! OS. However, I'm going to go ahead and switch it to something different in the next video. So that was installing Linux for the very first time. Just know that it took me a good 60 days before I got over the hump and really started really enjoying myself in Linux. It is such a culture shock coming from Windows as a longtime Windows user of about 15 to 20 years. Actually, you know, maybe even longer than that. I think Windows 3.11 was when I jumped on the Windows bandwagon. So I, that's why I'm making this entire series to help you out because it's such a hard thing to get going in Linux. Uh, check down in the actual cards here. I'm going to put the next video in this series right there. So be sure and click on that. And in the top comment, I'm going to leave the full playlist. So please check out that. A big shout out to my Patreons. I wouldn't be able to make these videos without you. So thank you. And I'll see you in the next video.